Dude, check it out. The content discussed in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. While we strive to provide accurate and up-to-date information, the topics covered may be controversial and opinions expressed are those of the speakers. It is important to consult with a qualified healthcare professional regarding any medical concerns or decisions. Listener discretion is advised. We were on a, a bachelor party and we went camping. One of my friends said, we're going to do mushrooms. Now they were all into taking mushrooms, sitting around a campfire, doing nothing but drinking. I'm not that guy. So I get up and I go on a hike. I can feel its existence, if that makes sense. I can see every tiny particle and this freaking dragonfly. And I can, I can feel his, th I, I, I can feel his thought process. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim, Jim Brewer. Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. And this is Jim Brewer. Now you know the song, Mike. You tried this a couple of podcasts ago, but yeah, you couldn't get I, it. I, I, I still know the song. I can't. Still don't it. know. All right. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. I totally forgot about it till you brought it up. <laughs> I'll come up with other ones. I'll come up with other ones. How you doing? Everything good? Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm great. How you doing? I'm doing all right. All right. A lot of a lot of moving and grooving on going on here. Always. A lot of big a lot of big discussions of the show and where to go and what it's creating and the live events and um should be interesting what what twenty twenty four brings us. So let me explain this guest. I meet this guy. He comes up and he goes, Hey, uh, my name's Charles. I live here in Naples. I do psychedelic therapy. And he says, I do a lot for PTSD and, and it's not just that, but other people. And I'm like, wow, that's, I've heard about that. He goes, yeah, it's very successful. And he, you know, he had, a, he was very charming and he's very, he was a great salesperson for himself. So I was very intrigued by him. And I wanted to pick his brain more, but it just, it, it wasn't the right spot. So I was like, Hey, yeah, let, let's, uh, he gave me his number and I, I didn't lose his number, but you know, I come home and I'm now I'm off on a mission. I got to do something for this kid. And, and this one's all emotional. And my wife's my wife's got something here. And then now I want to get back in touch with him. And I'm looking, I'm like, did I take his number? Did I take a picture of the card he gave me? So I'm going through my, I'm going through my business cards. I'm like, damn it. Now I know this sounds crazy. But when I keep thinking of someone, I know a lot of you don't believe, I'm telling you, it's like the force. Well, I go to um, Path to Freedom. It's for trafficking. It's an event. We raise money to help the house where they, where they put the girls that have been trafficked, abused, and stuff like that. And out of nowhere, I'm at the event, and boom, who comes up to me? Charles, the psychedelic therapy guy. He goes, hey, man, it's Jim. He goes, hey, it's Charles. And at first I didn't really, like, hey. He goes, you know, the psych. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've been trying to, I've been looking for you. I've been trying, I've been thinking of you. I've been trying to get in contact with you. Oh, my God, I'm so glad. I'm like, give me your number now. And he had um, two, he had patients there as well. Now, listen, this guy could have been brilliant. I'm like, okay, I'm just, just walk up to Brewer and tell me about patients. And these two patients came up, and they started telling me about it. And I'm very intrigued. You know, a couple months ago, my daughter showed me this documentary about uh, – I don't know if this is a good thing. She showed me this documentary about LSD, how, alcohol, how some alcoholics never drank again because they found God, or they found uh, the deeper meaning of life. They were one and done. Um, and you're starting to hear about it more and more. I know Rogan has really uh, touched on the subject and the DMT, 
which scares the living snot out of me. Some people have come up to me like, dude, you got to try DMT. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I, what the hell, guys, it's unbelievable. And what I didn't like was certain people say, you know, you feel like your, your heart's racing. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing things where my heart's racing. I'm going like, to freak out. I'm going to freak out. I'm out. I'm out. Um, but I am extremely curious to hear what, um, and some of you may be as well. You know, we lived in a world where the pharmaceutical companies are trying to help people and a therapist and which I still say therapy is great. But back in the day, we called that really good friends. Um, and so in this day and age, when the pharmaceutical company is, in my opinion, clearly failed humanity, we go back to our natural resources. What are our natural resources? Well, Let's uh, talk to Charles Patty. I believe that's his last name. It's Charles Patty. What's up, Charles? What's up, man? How's it going? I'm doing really good. All right. I run into you uh, at Seed to Table. I run into you at Path to Freedom. Tell, tell me exactly what you do because I, 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 tell, me, tell, me, tell me in the world what this is about because I am curious. I'm super curious about this. So my fiance, Christina Thomas, and I started My Self Wellness Center, <clears throat> which is a ketamine therapy center in Bonita Springs, Florida. But we specialize in psychedelic ketamine therapy. There are a lot of different kinds of um, therapy with using ketamine that's going on out there. But at the right doses of this medicine, it can be very relatable to like an hour long DMT or, or ayahuasca session where we specialize in working people with depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder disorder, substance abuse issues, OCD, bipolar disorder. And uh, we do a lot of work with our veteran and first responders community as well. So the what was the first that you said it's what type of what, what is it called? So ketamine. Ketamine is a ketamine. Yeah. explain to me what what ketamine is because I'm dumb as a rock. And I don't even know, I, I have no clue. So what is ketamine? So ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic that was FDA approved in 1970. It's actually one of, if not the safest, least toxic anesthetics on the market. It's so safe that it's the number one choice for pediatric sedation. So they use it on children one and a half and older for surgeries. What we do is we utilize the compound at a sub anesthetic dose which is sending people into these profound psychedelic experiences where people like you had mentioned earlier, say that they meet God sometimes. Um, other yeah. times people say that they go back to a past traumatic experience that they've been through and watch it play out from a third party perspective where there's no feelings or emotions attached to it. So they can process it, release it and let it go. Uh, other times people speak with deceased relatives during their treatment, but through the course treat through the course of six treatments at our facility, people are achieving decades worth of talk therapy. So, okay. Let me, let me ask you then when, when people come to you, what is like, give me an example of someone just came to you recently. You don't have to say the name or anything. Obviously someone came to you and they said, um, Charles, I'm really, I, I, I lost my dad, I lost my dad or, or, or I lost my dad and I just want to, I'm having such a hard time and I can't get through life or I lost my mom and my heart is shattered and I can't move on, whatever. Is there another realm? Like, I just want to, I want to go in that or I want to kind of see if I can talk to her. Like, is that an example of, of, of something that would go on? Yeah, no, I mean, it definitely does. And, and, and real quick again with ketamine. So like whenever we've had yeah. any kind of traumatic experiences in our life or just through the course of life, our neural pathways get damaged in our brain. And when the neurons are trying to flow through these pathways, they actually start to bounce off the walls, which causes a lot of the symptoms of depression, anxiety, PTSD. Ketamine's going in and physiologically remapping and restructuring the neural pathways in the brain. It's also going in and sprouting something off these pathways called new dendrites. It's causing new, neuro, new neuroplasticity and new neural connections in the brain. 
it's also going in and turning on the receptors in our brain that create our dopamine, which is our feel good chemical. It's what motivates us to get out of bed in the morning. But like I said, yeah. in conjunction with those two things, this therapeutic dreamlike state or psychedelic experience is achieving decades worth of talk therapy. And so like we treat people like the person, the hypothetical situation, which you just said. Um, and what it, this does is when we get into a disassociated state, because ketamine is a dissociative, the mind separates from the body and it removes the active blocks that are holding past repressed traumatic experiences so we can really process, release it and let it go. Think of this as like a chemically induced meditative state at the deepest level possible. Mm, okay. Okay. So is it so that's basically what it is it's not like um because some places there's there's like diagnose of of uh, uh, or or a certain amount of mushroom type therapy uh and stuff like that this is just one specific therapy correct so because ketamine is the only fda approved psychedelic that we have access to right now that is what mm. we are utilizing now that being said um, around July of 2024, MDMA is supposed to go through FDA approval. Other people might know that as like Molly or ecstasy, which is showing amazing efficacy to treat PTSD. And psilocybin mushrooms should actually be going through FDA approval in like 2025. So we plan on utilizing all of the compounds, but within the guidelines of the law to make sure that we're doing everything appropriately here. How do you discover this? Uh, ketamine? Yeah. Like, how do you discover a, the ketamine and how do you discover that this works? Psychedelic medicine saved my life, man. That's why we started the company. So like, you know, a lot of my healing didn't happen in a facility like ours because I didn't have access to it at that time. But if it wasn't for psychedelic compounds, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. Right well, now. what kind of psychedelic compounds are you talking about? So I healed with DMT, MDMA, LSD, psilocybin mushrooms, and then ultimately ketamine was like the final component of my healing journey. So you took all that? Not like all different. Yeah. No, I, not all at the same yeah, time. Yeah. So you try, what was the first one you tried? I mean, listen, like, you know, my, do you, do you like, I, my first LSD experience was in like when I was 14 years old. Okay. So like, I, so like I, I, I had, I had a lot of recreational psychedelic use growing up and stuff like that. But I also had a lot of substance abuse issues, which I ended up completely getting sober from taking psychedelic medicines. So, you know, I, I used all of the compounds. It wasn't until I got older and I was really trying to heal with them that I used them therapeutically. And I think that that's what people need to realize is that like, you know, there are people that abuse psychedelics. Not all of this is for healing, but when utilized properly for the therapeutic value, psychedelic medicines are going to be the future of mental health treatment as we know it. There literally is nothing else that's more effective in my personal opinion. And this is coming from somebody that suffered for over 20 years and nothing ever worked for me do you know the documentary that i'm talking about that my daughter showed me to offhand or no so i think you're probably talking about how to change your mind and it's by michael pollan and it was on netflix yes yeah. yes yeah. yes yeah 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 where, where it seemed like he really took a deep dive into that and i was i was fascinated by it and it really did make a sense and what he basically claimed was well it's gonna there's no money to be made there's no money to be made because you're one and you know, a lot of people are one and done and nobody wants anyone cured right out of the gate. Now this was his theory or whatever, but, um, all right. So let me ask you a question. You're 14. You, you, your parents are not together or they are together at 14. Um, no, my dad died when I was very young. Ah, yeah. Okay. And trauma, major trauma right out of the gate. You got it. Man. So you got, you got no dad growing up. That's people have no clue how, how powerful, uh, the dad is in a role of, of relationship. Um, okay. So that makes a lot of sense right out of the gate. So now you're, you're 14. I'm sure, I'm sure your first acid it wasn't even acid. I'm sure you're drinking. You're trying. You, you're a wild kid. Um, I wa I watched it with some of my nephews. My brother passed, left three young boys, 11, 14. So it was the most. It was one of the most traumatizing 
things I ever witnessed as a young man in my life. I'm, I'm still, you know, I go back those days. I'm like, oh my God. And to see those journeys, um, what people don't understand is society keeps moving. You know, you're in school, probably. You're, you're probably, they'll label you as a problem child. And little do they know you have emotional distress because you don't have a father. Your father died. Your mom's probably going through a sh storm trying to figure out things but it, there's so much there where you know i watch i watch with my brother's kids it's just well you know uh, you know life moves on and the thing and your kids having problem with school because he just realized school don't mean shit. he just got he just realized life is way deeper and and a lot more real than than ponce de leon or whatever the part of my language or other bullshit you're trying to uh, manipulate these children into. Sorry, I'm going off on a rant here. So I understand immediately. You got no dad. Yeah. So you're living a tough life as a kid, trying to get by. You have siblings? Uh, no, I was an only child. Only child. Um, stepdad comes in. Yeah, and my first stepdad was an alcoholic. You know. At least yeah, he, yeah. It, you got it. It's like, it, listen, like I started self medicating with drugs and alcohol at a very young age, way before even of course. fourteen years old. You know, so like, of course. I mean, then like when I say psychedelic medicine saved my life, you know, like I ended up, you know, when oxycotton came out when I was about eighteen, I started dabbling in that, which ended up leading to an opiate and heroin addiction, and I actually quit a six year heroin addiction from a DMT experience. So like when I say psychedelic medicine saved my life, it's like a hundred percent accurate. I would not be here having this conversation with you. And this and this is what I want to get into. I want I want to get into the whole journey and the story so people know the backstory. Yeah. So when you're taking acid as a kid, I'm sure there's nothing healing. I I'm sure it's just you're numbing and you're bugging out and like, oh you know, things are wow, the wall's melting, or like, oh my god, there's a dinosaur over there. So when when was the first so after acid what's the next how do you get is dmt the next one no how old are you no so like i didn't actually get to experience dmt until i was in my early 30s actually or, okay. or, or, or okay. late late 20s early 30s and okay uh, yeah okay. and like right. you know that's so one that's to the car side car. we're gonna get we're gonna get to dmt and i really i want to hear about that one yeah and some people ask me i'm like i don't know i don't I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. Um, so now you're a teenager. What, do, do, walk me through your life now. Walk me where life is. What, what's bringing you? What, where are you? You know what's going on? No, you know, like listen, like I started self medicating with alcohol before my teens, and then into my yep. teens, around fourteen, I was experimenting with like Xanax and pain pills and cocaine, and you know, pretty much anything I could get my hands on because I was just trying to self medicate an underlying issue, which dealt with the trauma of losing my father, which led me yep. into a crippling state of anxiety and depression, and a fear of death that was just completely out of this world. I like literally used to wake up every day and be like, am I going to die today? And so like, I was mm. basically just trying to drown myself in different substances to take the pain away and, and as a use of escape. So, mm. yeah. And then w what was there an age where you went, I got a, or, or did you hit a rock bottom where you reached a point where like, I gotta, I gotta change my life. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta break out of this. What, what, you know, listen, it, 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 it led, it led on for another 20 years after that. Okay. Jail, any jail time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. This is, yeah, these, it was, yeah. it was all from, it was all from substance abuse issues. You know, like I ended up getting multiple DUIs and possession of cannabis charges and things like that. And so like, you know, like, and then I'd be on probation and I'd fail my drug tests. It was, you know, my life was a wreck for over 20 years. And, and honestly, like. <sighs> until psychic i had an, an awakening experience from a psychedelic experience and and it really gave me the ability to love myself enough to actually want to change my life you know and, and, and explain that to me explain that to me explain the psychedelic experience that changed your life that made you love yourself that changed you Wait, is this I, I, th this is where I want to, this is the part of the journey. I want to, I want to hear how's this happen. Is it 
a street thing? Is it like, tell me what happened. Just be honest. No. So like, I mean, you know, the, it, it was a process of psychedelic experiences, but one of the most profound ones was I had already got off my opiate addiction, but I was still medicating with cocaine and alcohol. And I had always heard this guy named Terrence McKenna, who's like a psychonaut. He was a psychedelic pioneer. And he talked about a five gram psilocybin mushroom trip in pitch black silence. And basically, if you did this, then you meditated like this, that you would find out the secrets of the universe and what life was really about. And so me being the overachiever that I was, I took six grams in my bedroom in pitch black under a blanket comforter, and I started to meditate. And all of a sudden, I started to leave my body. And I went out into the middle of the universe where I became one with everyone and everything. And then I became one with God and realized that we're all the droplets of water in the ocean of consciousness. And so base. Yeah, go ahead, man. No, 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 no. The reason I'm going to, the reason I say this is because I took, I, I had, we were on a, a bachelor party, right? And I try to explain this to people and I'm like, I'm not promoting. I'm just telling you what happened. And we went camping. And while we went camping, one of my friends said, uh, and I wish I knew if he was cool, if he, if we were allowed to talk about this. Um, and he is a comedian. So he, he, he goes, we're going to do mushrooms. I'm like, ah, no, he's like, no, no, no we're all going to do mushrooms. We're out in the wilderness. We're fine. Now they were all into taking mushrooms, sitting around a campfire, doing nothing but drinking. I'm not that guy. So I get up and I go on a hike and I start walking. And, and let me tell you something. And I still tell people to this day. I I sat down in the grass and there was gorgeous uh, flowers uh, on the path that I just sat down and it was the first time in my life where I can feel its existence, if that makes sense. I can see every tiny particle. I can tell that it was breathing and I could tell that it had a conscious it had an actual conscious, a living conscious. And then I was, I saw the, I'm looking at the grass and to this day, I'm, I could, I can hear the grass breathing and I'm sure it was my own, but I'm, I'm watching it. But the best part for me, this is the part that, that blew my mind. And I, the, the, the only way I can describe to people is it felt like being in um, Alice in Wonderland, the way it looks and all that. It wasn't, it wasn't a scary feeling. It was the most blissful, um, comforting feeling. So I'm sitting in the grass. I'm, I'm looking at these incredible flowers, the deep layers in it, and this freaking dragonfly. Now, and the way I explained to you, you know, when you're out in the wilderness, uh, Charles, and like a dragonfly, just kind of, they look very sporadic and very quick, and they're and they're going up and down and moving all over. And they're, this thing was in slow motion, and I can I can see him. He was there checking. He just wanted. He was trying to figure me out, and he was moving over, and then he landed on my knee. And he was just looking at me like he's just looking at me like this. And I can I can feel his th I, I, I can feel his thought process. And it was the most beautiful. And that's what you're saying. I felt, oh, my God, absolutely everything is connected. We don't know if there's souls through a dragonfly, through a flower, through the trees, through the grass. Our souls, our spirits are everywhere. And that that's the experience it had for me. And I'm sure my wife would get very upset with me for saying this, but I would love to go back in the wilderness and do some mushrooms again one time. I really, I have no problem. I, I honestly, it, 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 it reconnected me and rebooted me into how everything is connected. And I know some people are like, I can't believe it. I'm just being honest. I mean, there's being honest and, and there's horse snowing the whole thing. But so anyway, 
Well, you know, these like, like you're saying, like these, these compounds cause very spiritual experiences for people. I mean, and like, that was my experience that night was like, when I realized that we were all connected, and we were all a part of this greater thing, I came in like that fear, death was basically an illusion, because if we're all a part of it, and we're all it that you know, they we're all mm. just made of energy at the end of the day, I came back from that night. And like, I apologized to myself and the universe and God for all of like, you know, the harm that I had done to myself all of, over all those years. And with that overwhelming, loving or overwhelmingly loving feeling for myself, I started going to the gym and I started meditating and doing breath, breath work, breath exercises and like eating incredibly healthy. You know, like it wasn't just drugs and alcohol for me. I self-medicated with food. I almost weighed 300 pounds at one time in my life. I wow. Was, yeah, man. Like, you know, like gambling and, and, uh, you know, sex addiction anything to take me outside of myself and like i said through the use of psychedelic medicines therapeutically i'm a completely different person than the man that i used to be now so w walk me through um so that experience after that experience now you're taking care of yourself now you go in the gym now you're um are there other little I won't call them relapses where you're like, you know, I'm going to go out and have a, a pounce, a couple drinks, or I'm going to, I'm going to go do this and this. There's still a couple of those. You're not a hundred percent there. No, no, it was listen, this was like over a 10 year period where I really ended. And like, I'm a hundred percent sober now. And I have been for over four years, uh, no alcohol or anything. It was actually after my son, Charlie was born uh, six months after he was born. I, I had a relapse on alcohol and I knew that I needed to do some di deep dives with psychedelics in order to figure out why I kept doing this. And so I got mm. a hold of some LSD 25 um, and I did a, a deep dive with it. And I basically went to my own personal hell. And my own personal hell was me trying to get to Christina, who's my other half, and and Charlie. And every time I'd almost get to them, they'd go through another door and the door would shut. And I couldn't ever get to them during this experience. And mm. after I came out of it that night, I realized that my own personal hell was me losing them. And that if I didn't quit drinking, that I was going to be living my own personal hell. So after that night, I haven't had a sip of alcohol ever since. And where did you do that? Where where did you do like what kind of environment were you in? It was at the house, man, like at other house that we were living at at that time. So you were alone at the house. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then and, and just 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 for the record with me saying that I do not condone people using psychedelic medicines recreationally or illegally. Like, right. Like, like, listen, like, yeah, you know, like this was just my journey. And and I didn't have access to a place to go do these things in a safe way. You know, I don't think people should be taking psychedelics by themselves. They should always have somebody looking after them, things like that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. I think. Yeah, we should just say that because there's always someone is like, are you? I am I, like, no, we're just. <laughs> having a conversation um the so after that when did you try the dmt when does that come so i have like 33 breakthrough experiences on dmt okay and and it was it was before that that i did the dmt when i was i was actively hooked on heroin and i had had like about I had had a lot of DMT experiences and I knew that there was something really profound and amazing to it, but I was on heroin and I was like, I need to get a hold of some DMT and use it with the intention of stop using heroin because I knew that it would work for me. And so it's yeah. like synchronistically, kind of like with what you were talking about, when you think about something enough, it ends up appearing in your life. Same thing with me. Mm -hmm. DMT ended up coming into the equation. I was at my house at the time and I sat down, meditated, and was like, please give me guidance and please help me get off of this. And uh, like the opiates, the heroin. And I smoked the DMT and I blasted out into like an alternate universe where I was around thousands and thousands of these beings who looked very similar to Dr. Manhattan. And one of them had a big red ruby where its third eye would be like on its forehead. And they were all cheering and chanting for me and telling me, you can quit. It's not too late. You can do it. And it was like this like 
oh, this loving, supporting feeling like I had never felt in my entire life. I came out of the experience bawling tears and I got an ounce of cannabis and some Suboxone and I locked myself in a bedroom for a little bit of over a week and I completely detoxed myself and stopped taking it immediately. Wow. So how do you, when did you open up your your office of what you're doing now so when i was telling you about the lsd experience i had i actually had some dmt at that time too and uh, not at the same night but i used it and basically like let's call it divine guidance or whatever you want to put the label of it on but i received a message that i was supposed to take a leap of faith and quit my jobs and that i was supposed to end up opening a wellness center where we were going to help people heal and it was like you know, I went through over 20 years worth of misery. And if I don't use what helped me to help other people, it was a waste of 20 years of my life. So I went and told Christina, hey, listen, you know, I just used DMT and I got this message that I'm supposed to quit my job. So we're supposed to take a leap of faith and start this company. And it was like after the leap of faith, and this was about four, a little over four years ago, like four and a half years ago, we took the leap of faith. She was, you know, our son was six months old. She thought I was nuts, but she was supportive. And and so I quit my jobs. We took the leap of faith. And after that, it was literally like the universe waved a magic wand and synchronistically everything started falling into place at the right time. So we opened up and did our first treatment like a week before the lockdown with COVID. And because we were an essential company, we stayed open, used the laws of attraction, stayed positive, kept pushing forward. And now, you know, four years later, we've done over 9,000 ketamine treatments and helped hundreds and hundreds of people get off of all of their pharmaceutical medications from antidepressants, benzodiazepines like Xanax, antipsychotic medications, street drugs like fentanyl, cocaine addiction, alcohol abuse problems. And it just keeps getting better and better. How do you even? How, okay, so you're Christine. That's Christina, your. That's your Christina. Yeah. All right. So Christina, when do you start dating her? So this we've been together for a little over five years. Okay, and you, what, what, what do, you, what do, you, what's how are you making money before this? You and Christina both. How, how you guys, what, what are you doing for a living? So I was in the electronics industry. Um, I was working for an international PR company and then uh, that actually my family owned. And then I was selling some ad space for a few different publications. And so, you know, and, and like I before that, prior to that, I was actually working at the Naples Family Fitness, which is our local gym. And that's where I met Christina. And then after Christina got pregnant with Charlie, I knew I had to go back and work a job that was going to make me more money. So I, I, I went back and worked for the family company so did christina know about i would assume she knew about most of your past so is and did she dabble as well or or did she come from a somewhat similar path or understanding path or uh she so no. She, so no no so like our first date i basically like i just talked about all the crazy stuff that we're talking about right now you know like my psychedelic experiences and these like, you know, contact with these like, you know, higher dimensional beings on DMT and everything. And like, she was really into it. It was cool. It was a great first date. I just kind of laid everything on the table because this is my life. This is what I'm into. And it's like, if I'm not right, right, right. No, I'm just, I'm fascinated with, I, I know if, if one of my girls came home, like dad, this guy's unbelievable. Let me tell you something. We're going to, we're, he's opening, he's leaving everything. He's leaving his family, but he's going to open up a shop. People are going to be tripping. Trust me, it's after everything's cool. I'm like, whoa, 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 what, 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 what's going on now? Hey, the DMT and acid, it's great. It's gonna be great. Like what? So, so what the? I, I what the? Fuck? Bring him in the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> so right, you know what I'm saying? No, listen, man. Like, I, listen, I know that all of this stuff sounds crazy, and I'm fully aware of it. You know, but like. It's, it's, Go ahead. No, you know, but like, here's the thing, man. Like, so during this oneness experience years ago, like this, like connecting with everyone and everything, I realized that we're all a part of the universe or God or consciousness, whatever label you want to put on it. And if I'm it and we're all it, then I guess I can manifest anything that I want, can't I? 
So all we yes. have to do is use the laws of attraction and put positive energy out into the universe and keep showing up and never give up. So yeah, no, her family was like, he's nuts. Like, you know, and, and she was super supportive. But I remember my father-in-law, he, he sat down with me and he's just like, listen, he's like, what if this doesn't work? What's your plan B? And I'm like, no, nah, man, listen, like, that's not how you manifest. I was like, there is no plan B. I was like, I'm going at this full throttle and it's either going to happen or I'm going to die trying to make it happen. But like, I knew that the universe had my back. Like, it was like, there was too many synchronicities, man. Everything kept appearing at the right time, at the right place. It, it was literally like, you know, it was a divinely orchestrated thing, you know? And, and, mm. and I know it sounds crazy, but like, I had some God experiences on psychedelics, man, burning bush experiences. I mean, like, listen, like I had a Jesus experience years before this where like, you know, I was told that I was supposed to quit taking drugs and alcohol and I was supposed to get my life together because I was supposed to help people heal. And like I was in the middle of a full blown drug addiction at that time. But a psychedelic mm -hmm. experience gave me that experience. And so it was like over the years and just following the signs taking the advice. And this is what I tell people too, because like we've come a really long way and we're getting national recognition. I've become somewhat of like a national spokesperson for the psychedelic movement, you know, getting spots on like, you know, Fox news with Kennedy talking about psychedelic therapy and stuff like that. The thing is, is like, I tell people what I did was I took the messages seriously. You know, Alan Watts, who is this guy, he, 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 he was amazing and he's like a philosopher and he had this quote and it was psychedelic medicines are like a telephone receiver. You pick up the receiver, you put it to your ear, you listen to the message, but then it's important to put the receiver back down and apply what you've learned to your life. So like whenever I got any of these divine messages on these compounds, I took it yeah. like verbatim, like the gospel and, and I just rolled with it and complete and like, and I want everybody to know out there too. I don't think psychedelic medicines are the answer. I think they're a tool and a catalyst. I think it gives you the opportunity to have these psycho spiritual experiences and heal through your trauma. But like, I also haven't used psychedelics in over four years now, and I don't take the medicines anymore. And I applied what I learned to my life. And now it's all about the healthy lifestyle practices like meditation, breath work, going to the gym, sauna, all of these other things which are the real recipe for long-term success, hence the reason why I'm doing so well in my life today. I, I, I'm so fascinated by this strong female in your life. This, this is because for, for someone to come in your life and back you, now, clearly, now let me ask you this. So when you, you're married or you guys, you're not married yet? No, not, not yet. married yet. Okay. No, yeah. So the child was not planned? No. Yeah, of course. Okay. No. Um, but I would assume huge game changer as far as another like, oh my God, this thing, this thing from, from wherever it came from, those having a child is, uh, is a whole different set of eyes, beautiful eyes. If you ask me, um, so who, who do you have one specific, um, patient where you go that person that was, uh, that one meant a lot. You know, there, 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 there's so many of them, but I'll give you one really, and I, and I share this story sometimes because it, it, it affects me and it was so profound, but you know, we had a veteran who was suicidal and he was like, he came in for his first treatment and the day of his treatment, he looks at me and he's like, listen, man, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go home and I'm going to kill myself. Like, oh shit. Like, like, like it was like, if this doesn't work, I'm done. I'm going home and I'm taking my own life. And I sat down and I looked at him and I'm like, listen, man, just give us a chance. Like, just let us work with you. And, um, he did his first treatment. And after his treatment was over, I opened up the door and I looked at him and he was bawling. He had tears flying down his face. And I'm just like, just tell me, brother, how was it? And he goes, I turned into a bird. He goes, I was flying over the landscape and it was so beautiful. And I don't know how to explain it, but everything's connected. The answer is love. And I don't want to kill myself anymore. Wow. It was like a light switch. Wow. Yeah, man. Phew. 
Holy bonkers. What a... I just think it's incredible this this day and age where these are the things that are starting to come up as therapy and everything. I know there's this mushroom therapy. There's this... Because uh, I, I would get these... Um, they call it cluster headaches. And basically it's just, it's stress. It's when I go through an extreme uh, change or stress in life, uh, I get crippled by these clusters. They're, they're almost like, uh, they're migraines times a thousand. And I literally, someone told me like, dude, you got to take the mushroom therapy. It's going to clear it right up. It's going to clear right up. And I, I just fell short of doing that. I was going to do that. I think they were doing a Harvard for the cluster headaches. Um, and I just fell short of it. And I actually healed. I, I was able to heal myself. I haven't had it since. Um, I learned how to control the stress. But this is this is a very intriguing it's it's all so intriguing. So you're four years in. What were you gonna say? What? No. So like, listen. Like one thing that I wanted to tell you about too, and like I would love to talk about more about this in depth. Is it's tell like, me whether it's now or another time. But I'm actually yeah. on the board. This is how the synchronicity of everything ended up playing out. I'm actually on the board of directors for a company called Nunotics now, and we're gonna be one of the first. We're gonna be the first place on the planet to offer extended state DMT to people. So basically, it's, it's, it's an hour long, hour to hour and a half long DMT experience. Uh, Graham Hancock, who a lot of people know who he is, he's actually on the advisory board. He was just on Rogan talking about Nunotics and us doing this on an undisclosed place, in an undisclosed place yet in a different country. But yeah, like it's so like, you know, the thing that sounded so crazy and everybody's like, oh, this guy's nuts and he's talking about all these crazy things. It's like, you know. Now I'm working with the creator of the DMTX protocol and we're going to be, I'm working with some of the most amazing doctors and scientists like on the planet. And now we're going to be able to offer this to people like for research and, and healing purposes. I mean, so then you have to go ask yourself, Hey, listen, like were these experiences that this guy have, you know, completely just trips or psychedelic experiences and is he nuts or was it actually divine guidance and things that were going to play out? And one of the things that Imperial College of London just did with this DMTX protocol, which was created by a doctor named Dr. Andrew Gallimore and Dr. Rick Strassman is people were having these contact experiences with these beings or these like, you know, higher dimensional beings. And they were trying to figure out whether these experiences are real. And, you know, Graham Hancock talks about it. And he says a lot of these participants in this study were making contact with these same beings and receiving the same telepathic communication messages and coming back and telling the same stories. And, you know, so we're actually going to be continuing the studies that Imperial College of London was doing. So, th Charles, this is um, d explain to me DMT just from my own personal from my own. What, what is the experience? Because I've heard a couple. This is what I heard. I heard. Um, I've, I spoke to I did a private gig in like Vegas a couple of years ago, and they were all like, Jim. You want to do DMT? I'm like, no. And they're like, she's the DMT guru. And so they all did it. This whole private party. And they were all in their 50s. These aren't like, these aren't, I want everyone to know, these aren't teenagers looking to do drugs. But these are, they all wanted, and they had guidance. They had this, this person that would guide them. And they all explained it's only about seven minutes long, but it feels like, like an like hours and they all also basically said the same thing i'll never forget the one guy he said he's now before before i even said what he said what i didn't like what what made me go mm, i don't want to do that he said my heart i felt like my heart was racing ah, i'm out i'm out the minute because i feel like if i were to try that right uh, and i don't have a desire to try that uh, I've, I have a desire, maybe mushrooms or in, in, out in the wilderness, or we could talk and maybe something else, but the DMT, what I, if I start feeling 
like, uh, can I breathe? Like, then I'm going in a whole different, then, then it turns into a bad situation. Um, but what this, what this one guy said, he goes, and then once, once you get that under control, I'm like, I, I, I'm not going to do that. He said, he goes, the best way to describe it, Jim, everything's going to be okay because everything is just once you know what is out there and how beautiful this is all relevant it's all it's all going to be okay and they were all very extremely happy and just they were on top of the world they were they were great human beings and that's you know that's the part that fascinates me they weren't druggies they weren't like hey man you know people get this thing like hey man we're gonna you know they get this visual of what you're supposed to look like but they were all very positive i just didn't like the whole the breathing or something what whatever can as people had that explain that to me so like well dmt is dimethyltryptamine it's in every living organism on the planet um it can be 5-meo dmt is the toad you've heard mike tyson talk about and stuff like that i'm specifically talking about nn dmt which is usually extracted from something called mimosa hostilis root bark um it's also the main psychoactive ingredient that's found in ayahuasca uh one of the reasons that dmt it had like it can give you a little bit of anxiety going into it because of the tryptamine. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, DMT is also created in our pineal gland in our brain. And it's most likely what's released at the time of death. So like we die and go into a massive psychedelic experience. Um, mm. it, it's known as the spirit molecule. Um, there's a great movie that Joe Rogan is in with Rick Strassman called the spirit molecule by Dr. Rick Strassman. And it was about the first clinical studies they did with the compound at the university of New Mexico. And that molecule saved my life, you know, and listen, like people have these out of worldly experiences where they meet aliens or angels and, one of, listen, like the the DMT experience that truly like changed me and actually like woke me up to everything was years ago, I was sitting in my living room and I smoked DMT and all of the furniture flew out of the room, right? It was like a scene out of the matrix. Okay. And I'm sitting in there and I'm like sitting on the couch and there's nothing there. And then all of a sudden, vroom, 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 vroom. The entire universe kept folding itself over until I was sitting there and I was alone and I was in the abyss of nothingness and like I was everything. I was nothing all at the same time. And I was sitting there and I was like, man, this is like super scary. And I was like, and it's very lonely and this is boring and there's nobody to talk to. And then all of a sudden, boom, I got it. And at that moment, the entire universe unfolded again. I flew back into my living room. I'm sitting on the couch. All of the furniture flies into the room. And I sat there and I go, we break ourselves down into the droplets of water in the ocean of consciousness and put ourselves to sleep to forget who we truly are so we can experience the experience of life. So like I am the I am and so are you and we're all it. We're just pretending that we're not. Wow. We get it. We get it. <laughs> we need a we need a long hang. We need a long hang. We need it. We need to. Uh, we'll we'll connect. You're in a. Well, you said Benita Springs. Yeah. Right. Benita yeah. Springs. Yeah. Yeah. We're so we're, my, myself, wellness, and Benita Springs. And listen, an intramuscular shot of ketamine at the right dose at our clinic is like a very comparable to an hour long DMT trip, except for because of the anesthetic qualities, you don't get scared. There's none of the anxiety because it's like a. It's a basically you know it's a sedative. It tranquilizes you into this psychedelic experience so like it's you know ketamine is just as profound except for it sends you into this dreamlike state with lack of anxiety so it's much more digestible for people than you know smoking dmt gotcha gotcha well so where can people where can people find you and make appointments so Charles? so we are at 3541 bonita bay boulevard uh suite 200 our, our number is 239-908-9958. You can go to myselfwellness.com. And then another thing I didn't get to talk about was that we have a nonprofit organization called the Warriors of Consciousness. And what we do is we actually have put over 75 people through treatments that can't afford them to this time already, uh, you know, in the oneness of everything. And, you know, if we're all lit, everybody needs access to this healing medicine. So if anybody wants to check out the Warriors of Consciousness, it's W-O-C 
F-U-N-D dot org. And uh, yeah, we are here to assist people and hold their hands through the process of their healing journey. And um, we want to help everybody that we can. Sounds good. Thanks for hanging out, man. We'll see you at uh, another event somewhere. For just sure. Just randomly, randomly crossing each other's paths once again. Uh, I wish you the best, Charles, and we may be calling you sooner than later. I, I had some people picking my brain like, I think I may want to uh, fly over there and try something. I'm like, all right, well, I'll talk to Charles about it. We'll talk off air about it. Awesome. Charles, all the best to you and your and your son. Yeah, my son, Charlie. And listen, thank you so much for everything you do, brother. I really appreciate you. Thank you, man. You have a good one. Take care, Charles. Thanks. Mike, you want to try that? You got any issues? In. You want? You, I know you're in. You're dude, in no matter what. what. Dude, dude, like, like you were your story with the the dragonfly and 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 being connected. Like, I, you know, I've I've dabbled in in mushroom psychedelics. I, I've done acid when I was much younger. I don't prefer the acid. I, I like more of the the natural. But it, and for me, it's like I don't take them just like, hey, let's have a great weekend. Let's let's trip balls. I I take them when I feel. Like they, they almost like talk to me, like I'll get them and I'll hold them and I'll just be like, Hey, like today feels like a good day to take these and, and I'll take them. And it's, it's the same thing. Like you feel so connected. It's, it's not, it, there's nothing really, I mean, in my case, nothing much scary about it. And you, you feel way more connected with the earth. And, and when I come off of them, when, when they're starting to wear off, I get depressed because it's like. I finally get to see the world for what it really is. And then when it wears off, I'm coming back to this fake chilled out, you know, no one knows what's going on, all the lies going on in the world. It just, you just, you know, it's yeah. Okay. But do you feel, because that's what you don't want to do. You want right. to, I, I feel, and I'm sure Charles would, would help with that where you want to go see, exactly what like finding god or some people find jesus and now they're all dipped in so when you do feel that what he's saying and what i what i've said too is like you see that moment you know you know it exists now you have to hone that and work it into your life and understand that underlying existence of mm -hmm. of how powerful that is rather than like, burr, 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 burr. um, so I, right, maybe, maybe, maybe there's, maybe there's something, I, I think someone else also asked me about this and they said they were very curious and it's very interesting because the person of interest along with you and along with Charles all had the same exact thing in common, the family, the home, someone's removed. Um, it's amazing. So, all right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome conversation today. Uh, for those of you that are just checking in on, on a different note, like even, even if you want to do that or you're not into, or you're not sure, it doesn't matter. One of the things that, that is an underlying thing is, It, this drives me to nuts too with just sexuality and um i i believe when, once you once you once you have a child um some people can't have children and this is what would get this would get me nuts how societies will say my body my choice my and you and you you're recklessly talking about an existence and you're underestimating the power and the beauty of all our existence. And when you just take sex and you take, hey, you know, look at that kid, I don't want to pay for it. You're basically, when you, when you abandon a child or you don't take that seriously, you're basically throwing it in a dumpster, allowing it to spin uncontrollably. And for a lot of people, it's their whole lives, their whole lives of struggle. I see it firsthand in my life all around me. And it's all this father died. 
this father left because he started cheating and he left and he was abusive. Uh, this family was broken up. For anyone out there, don't you dare underestimate the power you have, the beauty you have, the majestic duty and power to take care of another individual, especially if you've been gifted and blessed to be able to have a child. And if I can explain this in this way, if you believe something exists, I 100% I so energies, whatever you want to call it, you were trusted. You should take that as an honor, whether it was a horrible circumstance, whether it was whatever circumstance. If you can put your bullshit to a side and go, wow, the powers that be, the existence of life gave me and trusted me to nurture this soul that was plopped into my life. Maybe your existence would have a little more meaning than whatever you see fit that you think is going to make you so special. There's so many children out there, so many people, so many adults that are still alcoholics, drug addicts, depressed, no direction because you weren't there as a father, because you left, because you abandoned. Don't ever underestimate that. And if you're able to have a child, don't underestimate what that child is capable of being. That child may be the next Messiah. You don't know that. There may be a billion Messiahs. I believe we're all Messiahs. I really believe that. What, what, what I go crazy with is, yes, the Bible. I have nothing against the Bible. I have nothing against any of those. They were written thousands of years ago. You think books just stop? You think stories just stop? Who's to say we're not living in the most biblical times right now if that's what you want to define them? Who's to say who is the prophet? Who's to say who are the messiahs? Who's to say the books are being written right now? You can't. So acknowledge what's around you. Acknowledge the help. Acknowledge the spirit. Acknowledge everything that can lift you up into a stronger being, a stronger soul, a stronger spirit, and bring you so we get back to the way we're supposed to take care of one another and wake up because the ball game, the, the Taylor Swift concert, the all your false idols are leading you into a path that you have no clue of the destruction and that energy that you're leaving behind that you could have helped somebody and you could have lifted their life to a whole new level and created yourself a messiah. Good hanging out today, man. We'll catch you guys soon. Thanks for hanging out in the Bruniverse. We'll check you out next week. Check out tour dates. I'll see you out there on the road. Later. Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week, and I have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there. Margie the Moon. <laughs>